We're going to talk about how to draw and paint like Steve Rude, but first there's a pretty cool story behind these videos. Hi, my name's Kenzo and this is Love Life Drawing. About 20 years ago when we were kids, me and my brother loved comic books and we'd go to the comic shop every weekend and pick up what we could with our pocket money. And one that we used to buy was Nexus. And my mum Mako was learning to use Photoshop back then, so she decided to Photoshop us in to some of our favourite comic book covers. She put me into this Madman cover by Mike Allred, and she put my brother into this Nexus cover by Steve Rude. We loved that classic, high quality style that Steve Rude had. So you can imagine our surprise when, fast forward to 2018, out of the blue, we got an email from someone called Steve Rude, and he said, I've seen them all. All the artists, YouTube videos, pro and amateur, and everything in between. Love Life Drawing, however, beats them all. It contains the best and most perfectly explained narrative I've ever heard. Tapping into a commonality that the average person and the highly trained journeyman alike can't help but identify with, I know it has with me. We couldn't believe it. We'd been inspired by his artwork decades ago, and here he is, the co-creator of Nexus, encouraging us and saying that he likes love life drawing. So, of course, I asked if we could make a video about his drawing and painting skills, and he very kindly agreed to let us show his work in this video and answer my questions. And he even sent us some scans of artwork that I don't think is up online, so that's really cool too. Now this first part has insights direct from Steve on how he creates his illustrations, color schemes, and other things about his process. The second video is gonna be about how he developed and continues to develop his skills, as well as what makes Steve's work so high quality. You can follow Steve on Facebook at facebook.com slash steverudethedude or his website at steverude.com. I've also published the email that has all the full answers that he sent me to my questions. So that's gonna be on our website and you can check that out. This vi the videos kind of have the highlights of that. So if you wanna see the full version, you can check that out there. Steve explained that his illustrations start and end with imagination. He has an idea, an image he sees in his mind, which he'll sketch out, and his aim is for his final product to represent that imagined idea. To help make his vision into a reality, he starts with thumbnailing, little two inch tall sketches to get the elements in the right place, figure out the light and a color scheme, it's definitely something worth trying if you haven't before. During a long pose at a life drawing session, why not try some thumbnails to see how you'd like the composition to work on the page? And the next step involves references. Take a look at the references that Steve gathered for this Captain America image. He said that some artists go to great lengths to gather perfect references, staging photo sessions with models to get precise poses and lighting while others gather what they can and they kind of wing it, with Steve eventually ending up more in the latter camp. Now his artwork to me feels really well researched and prepared, so I was surprised to hear that he puts himself into that less meticulous category. But I suspect that Steve's standards are really high, so what he considers winging it may be different to what we think of as winging it. It's really illuminating to me to understand how much preparation goes into the illustrations. These artists aren't just magicking up these images straight out of their hands, they're crafting them by combining imagination, knowledge and skill, and then real life observation and references. You know, the imagination has the big vision, the real life observation, the references, have the details and the sort of facts that are needed for the image, and then the knowledge and the skill bring the two together you know, plus a heavy dose of hard work. Just before we continue, I just wanted to let you guys know about the free guide we have at lovelifedrawing.com. It's called Life Drawing Success. Uh, and we also have a newsletter where every week we'll send out useful tips and extra information. So check those out if you haven't already. You can go sign up at lovelifedrawing.com slash lifedrawingsuccess. 
When I asked Steve about how he chooses colors, I thought he probably used some set of principles or theories. You know, it felt to me like he often balanced the color temperature in his illustrations and stuff like that. So there must be some framework or secret to how he puts them together. But here's what he actually said. My color palette is simple. White and black, two yellows, like lemon yellow and yellow ochre. Orange, two reds, as in a medium to light red and alizarin crimson. A dark brown, like burnt umber, a couple of greens and two blues, usually a phthalo blue and an ultramarine. Unlike most people, I don't think in terms of warm and cool colors. To me, they're just colors. Whatever color works best, that's what I put in. And he explained that it was never a natural ability. He practiced and practiced, persevered through all the frustration, studied his favorite artists until this intuitive sense became part of him. And that's something that I've come across before. I ask artists whose colors I really like, including Mako's, and they always say they don't use any theories, they just kept practicing and now they can use color intuitively. And that's good news for us. There isn't this secret shortcut that we don't know. But on the other hand, it's a difficult path. But that path to great colors is there for us if we're tough enough to walk down it. Now here's a tip from Steve. Reversing things in a mirror and looking at things from a distance are two methods all artists seem to rely on to help spot problems in symmetry and compositional things that might be off balanced. When I'm about 50 to 75% done with an illustration and not sure where to go with it, I'll prop it up against a wall about 10 feet away and figure out what I need to pull it off. Things I've never been able to catch when working close up. Another method he uses for comic book work is to do a reverse photocopy sometimes increasing the size of certain elements. So do you ever do anything like this when you're drawing? It can be really powerful to take a fresh look at a drawing. Sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees. You've been staring at the details too much. There's something obviously wrong, but it becomes invisible to you because you've been staring at it for so long. For a life drawing session, some artists will carry a little handheld mirror with them for this purpose. For me, sometimes when I want to see the drawing with fresh eyes, I can take a photo of it with my phone and sometimes that's enough to help me see something and just go, oh, that area's colors are too strong, it's taking away from the focal point or something like that. Don't miss out on the next part where we're going to learn about Steve's learning process, which is really interesting and I think you'll enjoy it. If you haven't seen some of these videos I'm putting on the screen, definitely check them out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.